you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hey folks, it's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There are ladies and gentlemen, that makes it official. Welcome to the big show. The Chris Voss Show is a family that loves you, but doesn't judge you, at least not as harshly as your mother-in-law. She never liked you anyway. Refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to goodreads.com, fortune's Chris Voss, linkedin.com, fortune's Chris Voss, Chris Voss, one of the TikTokity, and all those crazy places on the internet. As always, we have the most amazing authors that we've been bringing you on the show for 16 years and over 2,000 episodes. We hit 16 this August. I think on the 19th. So there you go. We're old. <laughs> we're we're in our teens, so we're going to be trouble, I guess. I don't know. We're one of those podcasts. What can you say? Anyway, we have an amazing author on the show, a multi-book author. You may have heard and read many of his books. Steve Hamilton is joining us on the show with us. His newest book comes out August 27th, 2024, called An Honorable Assassin, the Nick Mason Novels series we're going to be talking about his books his insights how to become an author and and what does he love about writing we're going to find that out or else i don't know what that means <laughs> steve hamilton is the new york times best-selling author of both the alex mcknight series and a standalone novel the lock artist currently in film development he's one of only two authors in history along with ross thomas to win the Edgar Award for the Best First Novel, and then to follow that up later in his career with an Edgar for Best Novel. Beyond that, he's either won or been nominated for every other major crime fiction award in America and the UK, and his books are now translated into 20 languages. Welcome to the show, Steve. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for all that, Chris. This is this is amazing. Thank you. There you go. It was your, I mean, it's your bio. You did it. <laughs> yeah, when, but when you hear somebody say it like that, it sounds like, damn, you know? Yeah, yeah. People ask me if they can pay me, you know, to just introduce them when they enter yeah, a room. Kind of like kidding. when the president has the music come up when he ever mm-hmm. enters a room at the uh, White House Affairs or whatever. But yeah, just, uh, and I just see, entering the room now is Steve Hamilton, author of there you go. So, Steve, give us your dot coms. How would you like to find? Have yeah, sure. Find uh, the website is it's author Steve Hamilton dot com, mm-hmm. and then you uh, and then you can go. You know, Twitter is author Steve and whatever or X whatever it's called these days, and just Google me, you'll find me. There you go. Twitter soon to be called bankruptcy and bankruptcy court. That's right. That's right. Uh, there you go. The BK.com is what it'll be called. Not to, uh, do we get a check from Burger King for that? Anyway, Steve, tell us a 30,000 overview of your new book. Right. What's this? Uh, new book. New book. This is the third book in the Alex Mc, sorry, the third book in the Nick Mason series, not to be confused. Like I just almost did with the Alex <laughs> McKnight series, which was uh, that, that was my first series that was set in Michigan. And Nick Mason is a professional criminal born and raised in Chicago, grew up there, stole cars there, got in trouble there, went to prison, made a deal to get out, sold his soul to the devil to to get out of prison early. Uh, He made this deal that he gets out, but anytime the phone rings, he has to pick up that phone and do whatever that person tells him to do. Sounds Um, like he's married. (laughs) That's a good joke, wasn't it? My wife is going to love that one. Thank you so much. Smack that one out of the park. Man, I'm not even in trouble yet, but now I am. But yeah, so that one, so that was the first book, really, is sort of how, sort of him negotiating his way through this new life. That that was the first book called The Second Life of Nick Mason, and in the second book was called Exit Strategy. And you can mm-hmm. sort of from that title, you can sort of guess what his mindset is. Uh-huh. He's trying to get out of this devil's bargain that he made, this this vice grip. And Sounds at like the he's end, married. Yeah, <laughs> Oh man, we have the callback joke worse. for the show. It is getting worse and worse for me here. And at the end of that book, without giving it away, you know, you trade. Sometimes you get rid of one master, you find out there's another master above ah. that. And the last page of that book, the second book, Exit Strategy. He's getting on a plane to Jakarta, of all places, the most far flung place that he could even imagine. Mm-hmm. And this is the third book, an honorable assassin. And uh, page one, he's getting off that plane. 
There you go. The next stage in the series. So how many books do you have total under your belt now? You have quite a I few. I think it's 18. Something there you like go. That. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. I mean, that's that's no small feat. That's, it's just, that's quite it, a lot you know, of feat. You just keep doing it, and they keep publishing them, and all of a sudden you got a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got them all under your belt. So you've got the two series that run. Give us the names right. of the two series again. So the, Alex, the, the Alex McKnight series. That's That's where I began. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, with this ex Detroit cop who's living in a in in a real place called Paradise, Michigan, mm -hmm. which is the smallest place you've ever seen in your life. You drive forever to get nowhere, basically. But it's up on the shores of Lake Superior. Sounds like my first I, ten I, marriages. I just <laughs> I thought it's like why not try to set a hard boiled novel um, in the most remote place I could. You know, this is a few yeah. years ago when not, not a lot of guys were doing that. So that was the first series, yeah. and then. This is the Nick Mason series, and, and and you mentioned the Lock Artist. That was the the standalone that I did, sort of in in, in the middle there. There you go. And that's a whole different book because that's about a that's about a young kid who never says a word in the entire book. Okay, and so it's third person there. I, I was waiting for the marriage joke there, but um, <laughs> uh, I mean, you set up that one. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so god. Tell us a little. I, now I got you doing my work for me. I know, I know. Uh, the uh, callbacks are always a fun it's, joke. That's right. The, so give us, tell us how you were raised, what influenced you, when did you start writing, and when did it go on, and, and you're like, hey, I'm pretty good at this. I should make this a thing. You know, I'm, I'm a, I read books. I'm sure you do, too. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most people listening to this, if they have, have any interest in this topic, it's because they're a reader, and that's really where it all begins, and I just... When I was a kid, I dreamed maybe someday I can do this. I can I can write oh. books that people will, will read. It was as simple as that. What was your what was your early influences? I loved Agatha Christie, oh. and I loved those those Alfred Hitchcock paperbacks. I would I would devour those, oh. and I would get in trouble every summer for sitting inside and reading them instead of being outside. And oh, Hitchcock uh, was great. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there was a bunch of books I read of his, and there was one that was real fat. I think it was a bunch of short stories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, he he was, you know, obviously he was a film director, but he would he had this talent for putting together these collections of short stories, and I, and I just they're just I I just ate those up. Yeah, someone hurt him when he was young. I'm not sure. Yeah, some. Yeah, he was he was a strange I'm just, dude. I'm You're just right. kidding. I'm he's, sure no, he's he wonderful. No, he he had some. He had a real dark side to him. Yeah, but yeah, you know, it takes it takes something. But he was a masterful director. He was he was you know, the he best. Some of the shots. So when did you finally? When did it turn on for you? Where you went? Hey, I'm going to write something, submit it, and you know all that stuff. You know, it's I gave the commencement address up at Lake Superior State of uh, a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I told him my story, and I and I said, you know, while you're wearing the silly gown. Go find a place just to be alone with yourself for, for, for a minute mm -hmm. and make a promise to yourself that you're going to hold on to that one thing that you really want to do someday. Oh. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's like, cause odds are the way the world works, you're not going to be able to do it r right away. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're graduating today. You're going to go work at a job probably. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. I graduated from Michigan and I went to work at IBM. And I worked at IBM for 32 years, hmm. but I didn't forget that promise. I'm going to be a writer. And wow. uh, I just found a way to, to keep, to hold on to that, that idea mm -hmm. and started writing short stories and finally wrote a novel. And that was a cold day in paradise. And, but even when I did that, I was, I still worked at IBM and wrote 12 books <laughs> as sort of having this double life as, you know, coming home at night, wow. being a writer, going to work at IBM during the day. Because that's because that's what it took for me. Wow! There you um, go. But I, the only reason I'm here talking to you is because I because I made that promise when I was in my 20s, and I just kept it. That's it. Keep the promise that you have to yourself, and now you're a successful author. Everyone loves your books. You get thousands of reviews and stuff. With this, with this, uh, the Nick Mason novel, the new book. Yeah. Is is it a stand, is it a book where you can you know you can catch it on the third book and catch up on the other two later? You can you, you can certainly start here. I mean, there's there's only three of them, so I would recommend just going out to the bookstore and buying all three of them today. Just actually. buy all three. Get on Amazon there, folks, and buy or, all three. That's fine too. But, <laughs> but go so, no go, go to an independent bookstore, and, and mm -hmm. because those are 
we need those and mm -hmm. and and buy all three books yeah. what keeps bringing him back to this nick mason character why does it why is he why is he interesting for you and why do you think he's interesting for the readers he's interesting you know it's writing about a character and you know and and i started again with with a cop who was sort of hiding away from life and getting dragged back into trouble and stuff and i mm -hmm. and and i think he was very easy to root for mm -hmm. and, and even writing about a safe cracker in in the lock artist this is a young kid who really sort of gets dragged into this i th i think as a writer you sort of want to challenge yourself and, and nick mason was the first character i ever wrote about who was a straight up criminal from the beginning this is wow. who he is this is what he does he still has humanity he still cares about his family he still has a code of things that he will and won't do but it was a ch it was that was my challenge is can i make the reader root for a professional criminal mm -hmm. who gets you know put into this position and now he gets the chance to come out He's living in this luxury high rise in Chicago. You know, did this guy set him up in? He's got this great car, but you know he's in this terrible situation because now he has to go do things that he never thought he would do. Mm -hmm. So that was the, really the challenge of that first book. Can you, are you going to root for this guy? Yeah. <laughs> and people seem to love him. So there you go. Everybody, yeah. I mean, the the feedback on him is that they do root for him. So that's that's all I wanted. And I want to hear him say that. I, w I want to hear you say that as a reader, and I want to hear you say that you just started the book, and you just had to keep going, and you stayed up too late to mm -hmm. finish it. What do you think makes your books different that people seem to really enjoy? And what do you think maybe stands apart for you as a writer that maybe you think why people like your books better? You know, I mean, that's that's a that's a that's a really good question. I think you know, writing in the hard boiled crime genre it's easy to have a character who's like a cartoon who's mm. just a tough guy a private eye with the coat and the thing and then the gun and i think what i tried to do from the beginning is just make this character a real person who mm. gets his ass kicked and gets beat up and and hurts and doesn't get right back up oh. and has doubts about himself it's like why am i doing this and mm -hmm. i just even even nick even when i moved on to i wrote about this even harder character mm -hmm. i always wanted you to feel that he had that he had a real heart and that he was a real person yeah there you go he's kind of human yeah. you know it's like the, i love the bond movies of course oh yeah, yeah james course. bond is so great but yeah he sometimes is a little too impenetrable although i think they went overboard with the last one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Making yeah penetrable but yeah though that's 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 a, yeah no I, I of course i love that stuff too yeah. And, that, and and there's a place for that, you know. The most mm -hmm. escapism kind of, you know, just fantasy. This yep. this 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 the spy who goes around the world, and it's kind of funny is that this this book is about as close as I'll ever get to that because he does mm -hmm. go to Jakarta and Indonesia, and he goes to Singapore and the Philippines, and he even compares himself to James Bond at, at mm -hmm. one time. It's kind of a funny line because he says that you know James Bond did it because he wanted to. And I and I have no choice. You know, if if, if I don't do this stuff, they're going to kill my family. Wow, there you go. That's why I never had kids in a family, so <laughs> I wouldn't be forced to. Before to go to Singapore and kill a Singapore terror. and kill people. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just I just do it for fun. <laughs> don't do that, folks. We're just kidding. Yeah. Don't try this at home. Don't, don't be. Do the uh, yeah. This that that reminds me of a joke that I heard once. It was uh, it was actually from a show or a movie. And the guy was like, yeah, I was in Vietnam. And they're like, no, you weren't in Vietnam. And they go, uh, yeah, I was in Vietnam. I'm that old. And I killed four Vietnamese Charlies or whatever you call them back in the day. And they're like, seriously? Wow, that's amazing. He's like, yeah, I was there last week. It's not my joke. <laughs> that's a joke, all right. <laughs> there you go. There, there you go. go. I was there last week. So, yeah, I, I try and stay wow. away from the, having to do the murdering. Uh, this is dark. We're getting dark here. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I think course, I'm making. I think you're becoming an accomplice or an accessory. Yeah, you, know, you know, this is the kind of stuff I write about, so I kind of ask for it. So it's all right. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. do you do any? Did you do any visiting? Any traveling to any of the locales to do? You know, your. You know, research? I. I wrote about obviously. You know, I was born and raised, born and raised in Michigan, but it's but it's funny because I, I I didn't write about Michigan until I left it. Ah. Uh -huh. You know, like James Joyce didn't write about Ireland until he was gone. 
yeah. from it. And Nabokov didn't write about Russia. And yes, I'm just, I'm comparing myself to James Joyce and Nabokov right now. But there you uh, go. But on the other hand, so there's something about being away from a place and looking back at it and seeing what's special and different about it, if that makes sense. But there's also this this idea of writing about a place that you've never been. Yeah. If you think about, I mean, Shakespeare never went to Italy his whole life. And yet, how many plays did he set there between Romeo and Juliet and Gentleman? Or, I mean, all, he wrote about Italy as a place, as an idea. Yeah. And sort of used it as a blank slate. And this is all my fancy way of saying, no, I have, I have not been there yet. I've not been to Jakarta mm. or Singapore or the Philippines. And... I'm going and I'm going to go there. I was actually planning on going there. Life kind of got, you know, COVID kind of shut the world down. Oh, yeah, and, COVID. Yeah. I'm really interested to go there and see how much I of the of what it feels like to be there. I got right because that's really all I wanted to do. And I mm -hmm. and I, I think so far I've heard that I sort of have that. I talked to somebody from the Philippines last night who said who, who had assumed I had been there. Oh, wow. There you so go. I, maybe I'm getting it right. You know, maybe yeah. maybe I got the feel right. I have a lot of authors on the show. They're like, "Yeah, I just pick odd locations so I can go vacation there for research." That's, yeah, that's that's that was my wife's idea. She's like, you, you set a book in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan instead of the Car the Caribbean, yeah, the or Caribbean, or France or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. Some place where there's great shopping. You know, you know, work on that, will you? Next for you, what are you, what are you working on that maybe you can tease out that you got coming down the pike? I mean, now that I mean, I'm I'm on tour right now, and I'm back home in I'm back home in Michigan right now. So I'm doing a lot of the great independent stores in the state of Michigan right now. And, oh, and of course, the, the question everybody asks me here is if Alex McKnight is going to come back, and and I'm happy to tell them that yes, I will, I'll definitely oh, go back to him. There you go. Um, do you think that's coming up next in the series, or is it? Uh, there's, uh, there might be something else coming. Might be something else. It uh, has to be top secret for now. But there you go. There's something coming right around, some. around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I'm sorry. Uh, so we'll look forward to all that and all that good yeah. stuff. Final thoughts as we go out. Tell people where they can pick up the book and, of course, any dot coms. I mean, like I said, the the author author Steve Hamilton dot com. That is the that's where you can find everything. And you can find out where I'm going to be in the next couple of weeks. You can order the books, you know, from everywhere. Or just, like I said, go to your nice independent bookstore because I really try to support those stores. Support the independent yeah. bookstores. That's for darn sure. Get yeah. those guys staying in business. Exactly. Um, so thank you very much for coming to the show. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. And thanks to our audience for tuning in. Order of the book where refined books are sold. It's called An Honorable Assassin, the Nick Mason Novels, book three of three by Steve Hamilton. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time.